housing strategy was published in May 2018, following extensive consultation, and my team is now focused on the action needed to deliver it. The strategy is kept under review, and I am satisfied that it remains the best diagnosis of the challenges London faces and the correct response to overcoming them. The London Housing Strategy sets out my five priorities for housing, building homes for Londoners, delivering genuinely affordable homes, high quality homes and inclusive neighbourhoods, a fairer deal for private renters and leaseholders, tackling homelessness and rough sleepers. These remain my priorities. My housing team is focused on delivery against these and I want them to be able to commit their full resource to doing so. I'm proud of the progress we've uh, already made, including supporting a renaissance in a council home building, which has now seen over 11,000 City Hall funded council homes started since 2018, ensuring that the 21-26 affordable homes programme will be majority social rent, delivering the land fund to allow us to intervene more directly in housing delivery, successfully pushing the government to take action to improve security for renters and address building safety, implementing a landmark resident ballot requirement to improve estate regeneration and ensuring that all rough sleepers had a safe place to stay during the pandemic. My housing strategy has enabled me to tackle the root causes of the challenges London faces while also adapting quickly to changing circumstances. The work required to remediate building safety failings has been more extensive than we could have envisaged in 2018, but the strategy's focus on high quality homes and a fair deal for leaseholders has provided a fair foundation. We've been able to react to events, including flexing our right to buy back offer for councils to support the humanitarian response to the Afghanistan evaluation, evacuation. evacuation. There is undoubtedly more to do. Increasing supply is the central pillar of my strategy, but this has been made more challenging due to the pressures created by building safety remediation, the need to retrofit homes to support our moves towards net zero, and soaring costs owed to the macroeconomic situation. Uh, I'll continue to do everything in my power, but the government needs to step up properly to properly fund housing in London and support our recovery. Thank you um, very much, Mr Mayor, for that detailed response, talking about the actions you're taking and the policy changes you've made since the housing strategy first came out. I think the breadth of all of that ultimately just provides more evidence for my original question that your housing strategy is now out of date and does need an update. Now, I want to pick up particularly on overcrowding because this is a topic the Housing Committee investigated in its meeting in January. Um, we heard evidence of the causes behind overcrowding, its extent, the consequences, the lack of data, and we've produced recommendations which we've sent you. And I don't want to preempt your response to the recommendations officially, but it was very clear from the rec- investigation that overcrowding is becoming even more of a serious problem for Londoners. The Deputy Mayor for Housing told us at the meeting that overcrowding worsened during the pandemic, perhaps to as high as 15% in London. And we can contrast that with the baseline figure for overcrowding shown in your current housing strategy implementation plan, which was only 7.5% in 2015. I don't need to tell you how overcrowding uh, exacerbated the pandemic and made the impacts of it worse on some parts of the population. So, I mean, this change of circumstance on its own, doesn't that warrant a review and a new housing strategy, particularly given the main recommendation from the Housing Committee was an overcrowding action plan? I'm unclear how a family living in overcrowded accommodation is assisted by a new document presented by City Hall. Look, the strategy is there. Right? And rather than offers of time being spent uh, you know, deliv- writing a new strategy, we've got to deliver on the strategy by working with the government to make sure more affordable homes are built for families. In addition to the housing strategy, we have the London Plan, uh, we've got the design codes, the, the SPGs, we've now got funding from the uh, government, working with councils to, to I was in Enfield uh, this week, three bedroom homes, so more families can move into them from overcrowded accommodation. The issue is the funding to build the homes that we need. We've got a London plan which makes it quite clear the numbers of homes we need. We also require councils to assess the demand for family-sized homes in their uh, borough. And so the issue is the support for uh, those councils building the family homes, but also we now have a London plan that requires developers to ensure percentage is genuinely affordable. So. Okay, I'm yeah. unclear how officer time being spent writing a new strategy addresses those issues. I mean, we do think there are gaps. We'll be, again, hopefully, this week, writing to you about um, other issues around 
um, potentially not having non-construction ways of introducing new homes, and that isn't covered in your current housing strategy. Now, one thing that's a lot of the targets in your current housing strategy are set for 2021, and this does line up with the Affordable Homes Programme that originally ran from 2016 to 2021. Now, you've got, you've mentioned, you've got a new Affordable Homes Programme. This runs to 2026, so it must be time for new targets and a new housing strategy to back it up. You've, you've redone the police and crime plan from 2017. So surely you would redo the 2018 housing strategy next and start on that quite soon. The, the logic of that means we'd also have a new London plan. I, I wouldn't mind that either. You know, you know I wasn't completely happy with the London plan or the housing that, that strategy. Means, that, that, means, that, that means two, and, must half, be that means two and a half years, two and a half years of officer time and money uh, doing a new London plan rather than delivering on the London plan that we uh, have, which is, which is bold. It's well leading in relation to our expectations, and it's leading to a situation where 13% of new homes were affordable with the dodgy definition of the previous guy, and it's now 40% with, with a stricter definition where it is genuinely affordable. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know that we think, and I think, that there are gaps to fill, and at least, at the very least, for the London plan, some early alterations would be a really useful thing to see. But I genuinely think the housing strategy needs a review. It needs reprioritising towards um, things we can do without building, as well as building, um, things we can do around, I mean, the Kerslake review has come out, for example, you've got a new deputy mayor, Tom Copley, He's, he might have some more progressive ideas, he wants to put his stamp on the, the old strategy. Um, I'll Assembly keep member, pressing I'm you for this afraid, in that case, I was hoping I'm for afraid it yesterday. Assembly member, you're out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.